The average person produces over 4 pounds of trash per day and close to 1.5 tons of waste per year. Americans generate over 200 million tons of garbage per year, enough to fill a stadium twice a day, every day. Over 75% of waste is recyclable, but we only recycle about 30% of it. If every American recycled just one-tenth of their newspaper, we could save 25 million trees each year. Imagine a world without recycling. With the help and contributions of recycling companies like these, we could save our world. You see this every day. You do this every day. You may do this every week. But have you ever wondered what happens next? It all starts with either single stream recycling or sorted drop off. In single stream recycling, materials are put into one bin and there is no need to separate them. Then trucks will haul them to material recovery facilities, which have one goal to sort the materials in preparation to use them for new products. These huge recycling centers are set across the country to help sort, organize, and process recyclable materials such as plastic, paper, and styrofoam. As we walk into one, we will discover the machines and all the work that is put into sorting recyclables. Welcome to the Sims Material Recovery Facility in Brooklyn, New York. Here, thousands of recyclables are sorted every day through a special process. It all starts on the tipping floor, where materials are loaded onto conveyor belts. To better understand the recycling process and equipment used, we visited the SIMS REC, or Recycling Education Center. The material first goes through screening. Rotating discs called screens have 2.5 inch gaps. Any recyclable smaller than 2.5 inches falls through the holes, including broken glass, bottle caps, metal keys, and balls of aluminum foil. The larger material continues through. This is one way of looking at screening. To sort by size, there is a triangular uh, shape right here. So the smallest would fall around here. The medium sized will fall in the middle, and the biggest shape will fall at the end. Next, the recyclables go through magnets. Uh, all the ferrous ma materials can be attracted or uh, repelled by the magnetic field. So, for sorting all the metals, ferrous metals, we are using the magnets, and that's how it looks. And in a real-life scale, these are the magnets that sort magnetic metals from other materials. Magnetic metals stick to the magnets and are sorted while other recyclables carry on. Next in the process, the substance passes through eddy currents. Eddy current riders create strong fields of energy around non-magnetic metals, causing them to shoot away into collection bins. Recyclables then pass through optical sorters. These scanning systems look at every object that passes on a conveyor belt. When it finds a plastic it is looking for, for example, a PET water bottle, it singles an air jet to blow it onto another conveyor belt. The items are manually sorted by workers to make sure things that don't belong on the conveyor are removed. Last bits and pieces are removed, and the materials pour into bunkers. When these boxes are full, the loose recyclables are conveyed to the baler. Inside the balers, recyclables are compressed into rectangles using hydraulic rams. The blocks are kept in the storage area and are loaded onto a truck. And of course, everything is controlled in the control room. We met with managers of the plant to get even more information. 
So what are any precautions you have to take while in the process of building? In terms of building the plant, there was obviously a lot of <coughs> issues in understanding what the ground is like underneath, so we have to make sure we design the right foundations for the building, so the building doesn't settle unevenly. So there's a lot of um, underground soil exploration, they call it geotechnical engineering, to make sure that, uh, that what we build actually stays in place once it's up. What are the recycled products turned into? So it depends on what the material starts out as. So, but they will usually go back into the same product that they started out as, or the same type of product. So the aluminum cans go back into aluminum cans or aluminum foil. The uh, steel will go back into some other steel product. It's not necessarily the same steel product, so a filing cabinet could become a bicycle, or Automobile could become a washing machine, but it will go back into obviously metal products. Plastics go back into plastic bottles, but more plastic toys. Most plastics do not go back into plastics that are used directly for food products. What is your opinion on the importance of recycling? Well, obviously, I think it's important. What is the difference between NYC recyclables and those in other cities? Uh, New York City recyclables are normally considered more contaminated. They're more mixed up. It's just uh, New York because you have so many people that live in high-rise buildings and you have so many people with so many different nationalities and so many different languages spoken um, and a lot of turnover in the population. It's very difficult to get a consistent, uniform program. So New York City is, well, one of the biggest differences, New York City has a lot of recyclables because there's so many people here, but also they're not typically as clean or pure as other recyclables. And where would you see the world without recycling goods? Uh, well, I guess it would be two big impacts. It would be much more if you also have landfills and incinerators. So you'd have a lot more landfills, a lot bigger landfills. And then um, the industries that depend on our material for raw material, instead of getting recyclable material as their feedstock to make new materials, they would have to go and, uh, and find virtual replacements. So they not more cutting down the forest, trees, and the paper, or mining, or ore, and oxide, or metals. They will be consumed with plastics. So it's basically doing two things. You're avoiding landfills, and then you're, you're replacing or the need for certain um, virgin materials, mining and so on. Where do you see yourself in the world today without your recycling plants? Me personally? I guess I would have a different job. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think that uh, I think society would be worse off. <clears throat> There's obviously a bunch of people that do work in the recycling industry, but uh, but the recycling industry, you know, provides a lot of, uh, saves a huge amount of energy because it, it takes less energy to make things out of recycled materials than it does out of virgin materials. And, um, and you're avoiding using up land and fill with uh, landfills. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. What does your job consist of? What does a day of a plant manager look like? Uh, basically, uh, when they come in the morning, just gotta make sure that everything, we uh, we open 24 seven, so gotta make sure that third shift, they had no issue, you know, everything is good before the uh, first shift guys coming in. That's a group, a big group of guys, 30 people coming in, so we have to make sure that the plant is safe for everybody to enter. Uh, we have to make sure that, you know, we check in our inventory, we see what needs to be shipped for that day, uh, and we communicate with our logistics people. Uh, we communicate with other yards in the morning to see how much material we have for the, uh, for the entire day to process. What are important machines in the plant, and can you discuss their functions? Uh, right, um, I mean, the very the most important machines are probably the uh, optical sorters. That's where we make our money. Uh, 
and that's that's where the quality of the material is coming from. Uh, <clears throat> but machines like the screeners, the batters, uh, those are machines that you know help us at the very end to move the material and ship them overseas or to a different location in the United States. How do you decide what machines and equipment you use? Uh, before we build this plan, there was a, a, a long process of uh, research and development. We uh, we have a smaller plants. We had a plan in uh, uh, Queens, and we have uh, still have a plan in in New Jersey. And some of the machines we tried over there, if they work, we implemented those machines here. Uh, but that was a private journey of uh, ten years of trying and. Uh, you know, mostly successful, but there was a couple of errors that we we did throughout the, throughout those years. What kind of problems do you encounter with the equipment? Uh, I mean, so far the biggest problems we have is the VCR tape from the uh, people throwing the, uh, all the VCR tapes into recyclables, and it's so many of them that when you when you gonna, guys gonna walk through the plant, you're gonna see that. All you see is VCR tape hanging everywhere, and that's the most harmful material for the uh, for the uh, for the components, you know. And we still don't have a solution for it. We just wish there's no more VCR tapes. Everybody uses either CDs or the newer stuff, like you know, smaller smaller cards. Thank you. Recycling is essential because without recycling plants or recycling in general, the world would be covered with polluted material and landfill and not many organisms will survive. Recycling not only drastically helps reduce the amount of landfills, but also provides materials to make brand new items and creates job opportunities. Harmful chemicals and greenhouse gases are reduced from landfill sites when recycled, therefore more wildlife and forests can be preserved.